Hello and welcome to this recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live coding session. CodeBuddies is a global community of amazing people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer-to-peer -peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts. In today's live coding session, we've continued to work on the project for the nonprofit organization Western Friend. Western Friend is the official publication of Quakers in Pacific, North Pacific, and Intermountain yearly meetings. It's a very large geographic area in the Western United States of, I think, dozens of uh, organizations, hundreds, if not over a thousand members. I'm not sure the exact scope. Uh, one of the important features of this community website is the memorials, memorial minutes. And these are sort of records of the lives of friends in the meeting who in the meetings in the community who have passed and each record is um, consists of a person's name and date of birth and death as well as the meeting with which they were affiliated and a biographical minute describing uh, their life and inter relationships in the community of friends so since we're moving from Drupal to Wagtail, we're porting over this feature to work. We can take a look here at the Wagtail website. Uh, it's essentially a Wagtail page with a title and an intro field. This intro text can be edited through the Wagtail admin. When I say edit this page, it shows me those two fields so that the editor can override the introductory text. Going back to the page, we see the lower half consists of a list of memorial minutes and a filter widget. When I search for a name, like, or a partial name, it'll, um, anywhere in the name, it'll limit to that um, person, as well as the drop down with um, the related meetings. Viewing a profile or a memorial minute uh, shows those same fields, the date of birth, date of death, and meeting, as well as the um, minute. Here I've only taken a short sample of text to work with the templates. On the back end, so to speak, the content management side of things, we've added a new navigation menu for memorials with the broken circle font awesome icon. And it lists here the minute, uh, memorial minutes, and they're paginated by default from, by Wagtail for us. We list the meeting name and the full name. When editing the memorial, it asks you for a given name and family name. And behind the scenes, there's a method on the model to uh, concatenate those strings as a full name. The date of birth select was actually an interesting challenge today. Uh, the default Wagtail um, calendar widget, which is, I think, jQuery date select or date picker, I can't remember the exact name, wouldn't allow um, us, wouldn't allow me to select uh, years before 1950. So I did some search, and when I say we on a lot of uh, times here, it's not just um, subconscious. I'm actually getting help along the way uh, from people in the Twitch stream and on Stack Overflow. Uh, so I submitted uh, a support request on Stack Overflow and asking how do I uh, either you know tell that date widget the calendar widget to let me specify dates uh, before 1950 or you know what can I do basically and within five minutes I had a response in a brief conversation on Stack Overflow that sort of tangentially led me to the uh, understanding that I could override the date widget and then subsequently on searching in the Django um, ecosystem, I found this flat picker widget, which I'm using flat picker on another project, so I'm already familiar with it. It's got a really great UX. It's a relatively small library. And so, you know, it allows us to select the dates uh, of any year. So just by typing them in, if we need to go pretty far back, which we do in some of these memorial minutes. Uh, we have a, so dates of birth and death, it's not always known when the person was born or sometimes when they died. More usually when they were born is the ambiguous one. So we just have this checkbox to indicate that the dates are approximate. 
I'll go ahead and check that in this case so we can take a look at it. Uh, before, I didn't have it checked, and so it was just displaying them as, you know, and being precise. And then the Memorial Minute text is displayed here, as well as being able to choose the Memorial Meeting, and this should render here, uh, through a search widget. We can look under the community. I must have misplaced one of the meetings here, because the other one's not displaying there. But uh, I can't remember. No, can't remember the name of it. Sorry about that. Anyway, you can search for misplaced content if you have an idea of the title. So we'll go ahead and publish this change real quick and view it live. Uh, so now we see that since I checked the little box, it, it added asterisks here next to the date of birth, death. I'm not, we don't have really a way of indicating which one it was at this point through this design, although that is also possible. And in a, um, a note here to say, you know, date is approximate. Uh, it's not really that hard to add a field in Wagtail that would allow me, or the editor that is, to specify that the date of birth or the date of death is the ambiguous field and group those fields in a natural way that flows in the editing process in the form so that they, so it makes sense and doesn't have too much like cognitive over the head, so to speak. And then this text could be displayed in a small form, you know, in the same card. That might be a design um, approach we'll take down the road. But for now, it's working, so let's uh, continue. This was overall a pretty large, uh, pretty long um, coding session. It was not as straightforward as I was hoping it would be, but in the end, it was uh, a good experience. So I guess the next step is just to take a look at the code. We'll try to spin through this relatively quick. Um, there's a little bit of a caveat in um, Wagtail that um, when you inherit from the page model, you have to, everything, every page has a title and every page gets a URL slug. If we look over here, there's a URL slug that's automatically generated actually from the page title, um, which is not available in this form. If I edit this form, we don't have titles for people in the sense of, <clears throat> it's not like a you know doctor or Mr. or Mrs. title. This is like a page title for a content piece, like an article title or something like that. We don't necessarily have that. And behind the scenes, I'm actually generating the title uh, in the save function for the memorial minute. And I think that will show through in the code in a moment. But over here, there's this slug field. Now, it lets you, it'll generate this slug for you automatically on the server, but it lets you override this slug. slug. The problem is this form won't submit successfully unless there's some value here. And since we're not filling in a title, it can't automatically generate a slug. Uh, so you would get validation errors. All that is to say, a while ago, I wrote some JavaScript uh, when dealing with contacts to auto create the slug based on the given name and family name, first name and last name, as I know in the United States. Uh, it turned out with consistency, our memorials also have, uh, the memorial minutes have a given name and family name for the person, uh, the related person. So I could reuse that code. So here I just, I moved the file to a more generic place and I'm reusing it, reusing it between those two features. Uh, another thing that's occurring to me, and I'll discuss this with Mary, is we might just want to re uh, create a proper foreign key relation between the memorial minutes and the person you know, about whom it's written. Um, we do have a foreign key relation between the memorial minute and the memorial meeting, so that might be a better data model. And then I wouldn't, uh, well, they would reuse the same functionality by default. So that would create other uh, Challenges though, you'd have to have created the person in the database first before adding the memorial minutes. I'm not sure if you can do that in line in uh, Wagtail. We'd have to take a look. In any case, let's move on. Um, so we create this memorials index page. And the reason you need an index page is to display, uh, to allow the editor to override the title and you know intro text. This is a proper Wagtail page and then to render the functionality this, in order to have this top level slash memorials URL, we'd like to basically nest it directly under our home page, which is the root page for our web, for our site. So here we're just telling our, our home page to also allow a memorial index page to be added in the page hierarchy at that point. 
Now, the few of these changes are tangential were for consistency. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I introduced a new calendar widget and we'd like to use the same calendar widget throughout the site. So the calendar widget is called Flat Picker and at all the places on the site we're picking dates, we're not picking dates and times. So the trick was to include this library in the project and then anytime I render a field panel for a date to override the widget to use this date picker input from Flat Picker. Pretty straightforward and Django provides this out of the box. So Wagtail didn't even have to do anything uh, of its own convention here. Django provided the, the convention. Uh, so this should be familiar with other people who have been working with Django for a while, which I have not. So I had to actually turn to Stack Overflow to find this solution. Uh, here, this is a linting change. We're using Slim Select on uh, the library faceted searching view. It's also a nice JavaScript uh, multi-select and filtering um, widget. We might introduce this on the memorial filters. If there's a lot of meetings in here, you might want to type the first couple letters of a meeting to filter it down. So uh, I just didn't get around to adding slim select here, but for consistency, I might do that as well. Again, here on our magazine, we're just using the, the date time picker. Uh, now here we've instantiated our memorials app. It's a Django app. So you just, by default, it scaffolds this for you. Uh, and we have some migrations. I'll skim over the migrations, but I'll read the code from the model itself. So here's the memorial model. There's a lot going on here. We, in this model, we have dealt with pagination, which you can kind of see at the bottom here. If I change the line of code real quick, let me uh, just go over to the model on my other window. Sorry for the delay here. But let's change the pagination down to one, and I'll refresh the page. And I'm doing that behind the curtain, so to speak, uh, because I'm doing the recap. Now you'll see that we have a page one of two, and there's one person showing here, and we have no filters in the URL. So if I click next, it goes to the second page, two of two, and you can go to previous. So that is what the pagination is doing. And there's a few other uh, helpers that we include from that library. Uh, we have a page chooser model. So that was used when we edit this and we scroll to the bottom and you see the memorial meeting I can choose a page and that's what gives us this modal dialogue to search for content um, these are kind of standard rich text field for a WYSIWYG editor and we're inheriting from the page model and we want uh, to add these memorials to the search index so they can be found in cross site searching and again we're importing the date picker from flat picker and we're going to be working with our meeting model from the contact so we can make that foreign key relationship so here we have two main classes in this um, app, a memorial and the memorial index page. We defined the memorial as inheriting from wagtail page. We have several fields, given name, family name, date of birth, which is a date field, and death date field, and dates are approximate, which is a boolean, giving us the checkbox. Memorial minute, rich text field, and memorial meeting is the foreign key to the meetings. And actually, it turns out I didn't need to import this contact model, apparently. Um, surprised my linter didn't remind me of that. When the, if a meeting has some memorials associated with it and somebody tries to delete that, uh, we want to throw a flag and say, hey, this is, uh, shouldn't be deleted. There's related content. For referential integrity, you want to keep this content in the database so it'll protect it here. And the related name from the meeting is Memorial Minutes. So if you have a meeting in your query set uh, at hand in your code, you can say fetch the mem uh, Memorial Minutes for this meeting. We'll uh, probably need to come back to that later on when I enhance the meeting pages to list related content such as Memorial Minutes, uh, but I didn't get to that today. And here's a model helper that just basically concatenates the given name and family name so that you can display that in the Wagtail admin. For example, here, if I go to the memorials, we can say the full name here is just actually that helper. And we'll see that when I look at the admin model definition. So Wagtail will automatically generate your form for you on the editing side of things, the, the back end, mm -hmm. if you just specify what field panels you want to display. Now for the date of birth and death, again, we use that date picker input from Flat Picker. Everything else Wagtail did, you know, by default out of the box, it gives us a, 
um, text field for given and family name, a Boolean field for dates are approximate, like a checkbox that is, and the page chooser widget you saw earlier. Um, we only want to add memorials underneath the memorial uh, index page. That keeps our content organized, so you don't just add them anywhere. As you see, I um, lost track of a, a meeting. Somehow I added the meeting underneath another piece of content and can't find it. So Now, this save method is what, when I submit the memorial uh, form, auto-populates the title. And essentially, we just say, you know, when saving this model, get the full name and assign it to the title property, and then save it. That's about it. And we add the given name and family name to the uh, search index. Uh, I believe that'll allow cross-site searching. We have this global uh, global search feature. I'll have to double check that though. All right, and the other main feature here, and this was uh, one of the things that took a lot of fiddling and there's a little bit of JavaScript involved. Uh, aside from the research, um, to figure out how to do this date picker. I think the most uh, challenging part was the pagination and um, remove the JavaScript. I'm not sure what took the most time to be honest, but let's go ahead and review it. The code again. So the memorial index page is what renders the title and intro text as well as then populating some template context based on search parameters and the page number you're reviewing. Um, there should only be one memorial index page and it has an intro text, as I mentioned, which is a rich text field. And it only shows that. Um, let's see if I can go to the front page. Memorials page. On the editing form. It shows the rich text field and the page title. And it only allows memorials to be created under, underneath of it. We had to do this two-way relationship, um, otherwise the memorials could be created in arbitrary locations in the site, even though this only allows memorials to be created below it. So you have to have kind of a strict content hierarchy to keep things organized. So there's, here's the, the important part on the server side of keeping things uh, organized and presenting the correct data. Get context is essentially how a wagtail page can operate like a view. Uh, in a way, uh, this is the preparatory stage before the template is rendered where the server is preparing all the data to be sent to the template, called the template context. Um, so essentially you start by grabbing the context that is prepared by default from the parent class and you can attach um, other data there. So we have a drop down. Let me see where are we at. We have this drop down here of meetings. I wanted to populate that. So I needed to just get a list of meeting objects. Then I wanted to see if there was any um, sort of faceted searching happening. So we're going to get the, uh, the query string from the get request and look um, filter that out by allowed keys uh, because the get request can contain arbitrary keys. And that could cause problems on the air, server side errors and things. So we don't want to have that happen. Likewise, in the client, we had to do a little bit of safety ch checking there. Uh, so I just explicitly named the keys. Um, now these keys correspond directly with um, the Django query filter syntax. So you basically have a field name, title or memorial meaning, which are defined on the model. And then double underscore will reach over into a related, like across a foreign key relationship and look for a, t a field. So we're actually going to memorial meeting, we're reaching across that foreign key and looking for the title field. And we wanted to do fuzzy searching. So what this is doing is preparing search facets of the allowed fields. There could be none and there could be one or both of those. And so for every key in the allowed dictionary, in the query dictionary, if it is in the allowed keys, we're going to create a new uh, dictionary with the key being, the key of this new dictionary being 
the allowed key. I should have said allowed key, but uh, anyway, <laughs> you're doing a little more clear. Uh, and double underscore contains. Now that's a query operator for containment. It allows you to do fuzzy searching instead of exact searching. And then the value of that query uh, parameter. It's a little bit kind of dense code, I admit, but uh, this is preparing a search uh, facet. And then we just look for memorial objects and filter those by those facets. So yeah, that's basically how we got facet searching working. And next we turn to the paginator. Uh, we can paginate by, you know, 10 or any arbitrary number of uh, items per page. And we look for a query stream um, containing the page number that we're on. So if I go to page two, it's got that. And then we try to find the page of values we're on. If that is not an integer, then we'll just go to the first page. Uh, if there's no page, then We'll go to the last page. I believe that's what this is doing. Yes. And so the paginated memorials will bring back a set of 10 based on those criteria. And so we'll return those in the template context. So now we've got two new items in the template context, the meetings and the memorials. A lot of work to now, I've written this code prior in a different uh, app and just reused it, but had to repurpose it a little bit. So it still took some tinkering. All right, so let's take a look at the memorial template. Uh, we're extending our base template so everything looks nice and consistent for a given memorial. Here we are. And essentially we load wagtail tags so we can display rich text content. And then in the body, the content block, we render the title as well as um, three cards for the date of birth, date of death, and the meeting here. So this is mainly this divide this kind of stuff is just bootstrap nested markup. You just got to do it uh, in order for things to work correctly. And then if the page uh, has a property dates are approximate and that's truthy we'll render that dates are approximate text. Likewise, uh, we'll check that on each of the, uh, next to each of the dates. Render the little asterisk there. It's a lot of code for just one character, but all right, there we are. And finally, we display the rich text uh, version, parsed version of the minute. So this will allow you to put a safe subset of HTML, you know, like bold italics, some hyperlinks, in your rich text editor, but not malicious code. All right, so the memorial index page, again, this is here. It's essentially the same thing. We're extending base HTML, so things are consistent, and we have all of our CSS and things. So loading the wagtail core tag, mainly for the rich text editor. Displaying the page title. There's the rich text for a page intro. Now, if there's some memorials that came back in the page context, uh, first, we are going to render this filter form up top here. And this is cool, it's got a little bootstrap filter form toggle here. So it gets out of your way, but you can you can see it when you need it or want it. And basically, well, the trick here, I suppose, is just that the input ID and name have to be exact in the way I've written the code. The name is used on the back end to in the query string. So it should, again, match the Django query filter syntax. And the ID needs to match that because I'm trying to keep things consistent and <clears throat> have like a single source of truth uh, in the markup in this case. So we have this name and ID of mem uh, excuse me, memorial meeting is the field and the double underscore title for the select, so both these inputs are important. There's a select widget and an input widget. If we're meeting in meetings, we're just creating options. So we're enumerating over all the meetings and uh, reiterating over all the meetings and then create an option for each of those. I might put that into a slim select to make it easier because we do have a lot of meetings in this community. Now we have two buttons here, if you'll recall. We've got a filter button, which filters the results. Let's try like, let's see. 
So this is interesting. It even does partial matching, and that uh, gets put into the um, URL. So that's pretty interesting. So the first one is the submit button for the form, which is our filter button. And by submit, it actually submits to the page and reloads. I, I'm not doing an SPA here. I don't think that's necessary for every website. I think there's a lot of value in uh, having server rendered content and regular navigation. And in any case, Django does quite a lot. And then there's also this clear button. And what this essentially does is it's got some JavaScript attached that will clear the URLs string, the query string off the URL and more or less refresh the page, reload the page. Um, then for each of the memorial minutes, <laughs> this is quite a long uh, recap, but there's a lot of code that changed here, so thank you for your patience. Um, we're going to display, let's see, it's essentially a, it's a list group. We're going to display a list group of all the minutes. Now I've only got one here. I can edit that again real quick just so you see a couple of them together. Sorry about that. So let me just quickly change that back to 10 and refresh the page. Here we go. So you can see a gentle um, shading there when you hover over it and you can click anywhere on there to get to the actual memorial. So that's kind of a nice, uh, if you're using it on a phone or a tablet, there's no <clears throat> small target to hit. And the text is pretty large. So you basically for each of those, we're just creating an anchor element. Uh, with the URL, this is a, one of the Wagtail core tags that if you pass a page instance to that page URL tag, it'll automatically generate the URL for you. Some classes for bootstrap. Item action is what gives us this hover effect. And then we used our flex um, skills to get the, <laughs> not skills, but I learned a lot about, uh, a little bit about flex. I don't know how to say a lot. Um, to make things align so, so that this um, title would by full width more or less and that these next content items would spill over onto the next row below. I was thinking that if I were to define them as block elements that it should do that automatically but for some reason that was not happening until I rendered this display flex with 100% width. So okay we did that with the um, header add a little bit of margin on the bottom and to the right of this paragraph, the marginal right separates the born and died, um, the dates of birth and death. So, you know, they're just a little, a little easier to read, but just a little bit separated. Then the pagination, this pretty much came in from a previous um, work, but essentially we displayed just one extra work. So we're iterating over all of these memorials and creating a list group item for each of those list group action. And then the bottom here, we just create one more list group item, but it's not an action. Uh, and we justify the content center so that the buttons and everything will display in the middle. If, and then you have conditional checks. If there's a previous one, it'll show a previous button. If there's um, it shows the number of the total, and then if there's a next page, it'll display the next button. All right, otherwise there's no memorials if there haven't been any passed into the template context, which is a possibility. Now down here is the JavaScript. It took us a while to figure out, and I say us because there were several people in the uh, Twitch chat that were also kind of coding along, helping me out, helping me write good code, and I was reading a lot of docs and Stack Overflow questions, and the Mozilla Developer Network doc. So yeah, it's really a, a collective uh, effort that helps you build these open source uh, projects. It's really remarkable. So essentially we just create a function here to clear out the filters that uh, when I click this button, I, I just want to remove any filters that are there. Now that'll actually remove the pagination, which is a little accidental side effect, but what it does is it just takes the location path name so everything before the queue and it replaces the current window location with that which forces a refresh um, then we attach that to this button up here if you notice there was this clear filters button on click it runs a clear filters function down here now we're going to check when the page is rendering if there are some search filters there then we're going to display this button but if there's no search filters, the button's not going to display. So if I say, show me Central Coast Friends, and then renders the page, the clear filters button is shown. 
But if I clear the filters, oops, wrong button. If I clear the filters, they're not showing anymore. The button's not showing anymore. So essentially, we use the bootstrap class here, and we toggle the class. Uh, we we get the clear filter button and then toggle the invisible class. That's about it in order to hide it. Actually, in order to show it. It's kind of a bit inverse logic, but uh, if there is search query uh, string, then we're going to show the button by toggling the invisible class. It's invisible by default. So it's got a little negative logic twist. Then we're going to grab the URL parameters from the search query. And for each of those, we're going to grab an element by ID that matches the query string. So this is why it was so important that these the, both the name and the ID and the, as well as the filter functionality on the back end, they're, they're all consistent because I'm using it in several places. I'm using it to select an element by ID. The name is being passed to the server and being used in the query parameters. So in any case, we're grabbing that element and we're setting the value to whatever the value is in the URL. That way, when you arrive to a page, so let's just say this is this actual valid one. If I open a new tab and I hit enter, the filters are actually now pre-populated. I don't have a declarative DOM or two-way data binding going on in this project, so there is the imperative uh, code, but it's not been very much imperative code needed. So I think it's not a big hassle. And I did need to check um, that the DOM element does exist and catch it if it doesn't, because you can really just add any kind of, uh, including the pagination, we'll add URL parameters here. So I uh, didn't want to introduce bugs that way. Whew, I think we're about it. Um, this is standard wagtail hook to define a menu item. You just import your model admin and register it with the wagtail admin system. And in this case, we're registering the memorial model here and giving the menu label and then a particular font awesome icon and waiting so it displays high or low. Uh, whether or not the, um, I believe whether or not the uh, model will be added to the settings menu. I haven't really tried that one out or whether or not the pages should be displayed in the Explorer or excluded from the Explorer. And then you just define the columns that you want to use for display in the template and in the search fields. And so essentially when I go back here to Memorials, we have, um, these are display columns, full name and memorial name. And if I want to search here for like Charles, or let's see, Phoebe. I hit it to, oh, okay. Well, actually I hadn't tested that before. I'll have to take a look at this. User into a field. Well, cool, I found a nice bug in my recap, but during my recap video, so <laughs> all right, I'll try to fix that off, off stream. Man, well, I think this is about it. Um, I guess it's worth mentioning, I did switch from Pippin to Poetry a couple sessions ago, and that's been going all right. So here's the uh, Django Flat Picker module that we incorporated in today's live coding session. Uh, essentially just a wrapper around the, the awesome uh, Flat Picker JavaScript library, let's see if there's a link to flat picker, which is also really elegant, uh, lightweight, lean philosophy, so it's not gonna try to bring in a bunch of dependencies. Uh, I don't know what this size is, it's pretty small though. Let's see, anything else worth mentioning? No, I think that's about it. All right, well thanks, this has been a code review session for the codebuddies.org live coding um, session today. It was a, quite a long one. It was about seven hours just getting things worked out. Having some, you know, casual chats also with the um, people on the Twitch stream. I'm always glad to have uh, people hanging out while we're doing coding. Uh, I've gotten a lot of assistance from the uh, Codebase community and the Twitch community. So, highly recommended if you're doing some coding and you just want to have somebody to hang out. If your CPU permits, try to uh, using this open broadcaster studio and hopping on Twitch and broadcasting there. And do uh, please consider hanging out in the CodeBuddies.org community. It's a really great uh, an up and coming community, fully open source platform. And there's people there to teach and learn almost any kind of technology you can think of. It's not just Python and Django, it's PHP and JavaScript, Ruby on Rails, 
data science, all sorts of great stuff going on there. All right, well, thanks again for watching and have a great day.